What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be analysing the Manchester City away match in Italy against Atalanta at the San Siro in Milan. Lots of talking points, a crazy game really with lots of talking points so we're going to dive right into it but before we do make sure like always if you're enjoying that content make sure you subscribe to my channel by pressing that red button and pressing the bell putting your push notifications on helps to support my channel it is much appreciated make sure also you leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this video make sure also you leave your thoughts in the comments below and make sure you go and check out my social media links which you can find in the description below and popping up on screen for my twitter and instagram so we're going to crack on with this video and dive right in. So with City, strong team, Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne are in the middle. It's a, uh, it's a nice midfield, that really. I mean, with uh, David Silva out injured, it's pretty hot in my opinion. I did like it, particularly in the first half. I'll speak about that more when we speak about the game. Now Gundogan holding, um, Benjamin Mendy playing at left back, João Cancelo playing at right back. Pretty decent from City, nice attacking intent, Fernandinho, Nicolas Otamendi playing at centre-back. I did have my uh, doubts about that, if I'm completely honest. But I do understand John Stones having a rest for this game. Um, I'd have perfectly gone with Sergio Aguero starting up front, but we went with uh, Jesus instead, as we saw Raheem Sterling and Riyad Mahrez playing on the wings for Atlanta. Saw so Darun, the former Middlesbrough man, he started, along with Pas Pasalic, uh, who started too. Illich as well, as well starting. Uh, and to my surprise, Muriel seems to always be on the bench. Uh, I think he's Atlanta's top goal scorer this season. Why is he on the bench in a game that, realistically, Atlanta kind of needed to win this game? So, I don't know. Anyway, first half, City, decent in my opinion. Seven minutes in, lovely, lovely build-up. Bernardo Silva plays a through ball. There's Gabriel Jesus. Aguero would have probably taken a touch and look to try and get a shot and find the goal himself because he's a typical striker. He's a good goal scorer. That's what he does. Gabriel Jesus decides instead to flick uh, with the back of his heel and lay it off. And it was perfect. Perfect assist. A wonderful assist from Gabriel Jesus. And it finds Raheem Sterling who still has quite a little bit to do to find a good finish. And gets it right into the uh, side of the net and into the back of the goal. Absolutely fantastic. 1-0 to Manchester City. A lovely goal and everything that we were looking for for the start of the game. A dream start really. Uh, then Atalanta started to grow into the game for 10-15 minutes. Started to not so much have shots and put us under pressure. But uh, they were just starting to gather some momentum and push City further back. Now, something, make note of this, that Edison did so well, uh, it took him a couple of attempts to do it, but I think it was on his, like, third attempt, managed to play a lovely, um, I think it must have been a 60, 70 yard pass, it was very accurate, straight to the feet of the striker, all of a sudden the high press that Atalanta were trying to put City under, that kick had completely bypassed it. They're having to drop deeper then to defend. And we managed to keep Atalanta on the back foot uh, by creating some opportunities. Gundogan ended up going close. Raheem still ended up going close too. Riyad Mahrez saw a shot well saved and realistically could have maybe had two or three. I mean, Mahrez played a ball across. A little less power on it and Raheem Sterling, who's quick, but not that quick, to be able to find it at the back post. Like, we, we should probably have found at least a couple of goals in that first half. Now... One big talking point, Raheem Sterling was brought down, clumsily, my opinion, 40 minutes in, penalty was given, VAR had a quick look, decided actually it was outside the box, which was the correct decision, and it didn't take too long, that's fine. Free kick comes in, Raheem Sterling takes it, the defender turns his body away, leaves his arm hanging out, the ball hits the arm, referee doesn't give a penalty, VAR then has a look, he goes and looks at his monitor, makes the correct decision, and made rather quickly too that it was a penalty that's a new handball rule that's just how it is in the champions league you leave your arm trailing and it hits it i'm going to say that more than likely a penalty is going to be given unless it was like that inconsistent group round uh, of like a couple of rounds ago where uh, nothing seemed to be given with var but there we go that's a new rule and so finally we ended up getting a penalty that we were originally given then uh <laughs> the build-up on it was just crazy kind of summed up the game then gabriel jesus steps up and you're thinking yeah this is it yeah, probably one of the worst penalties I've seen. It looks more like Gabriel Jesus has passed the ball. He looks at the turf. It looks more like he's passed the ball rather than had a shot. There was no power on it. That even if it was on target, the keeper would have had enough time to, if he, particularly if he'd guessed the right way, make the save. Just a terrible penalty. Anyway, it went wide. 
So I went in at half time, 1 0. Uh, and to be fair, Atalanta will be happy with that going in. It could have been 2 0, could have been worse. They're still in the game. So I've just made a note half time. We're dominating. Just need to get that killer second goal. Come out nice and quick in the second half. Try and get that second goal. Look for a third and then start thinking about the Liverpool game. Uh, yeah. Football doesn't really work like that, does it? I did make a note that Atalanta will want to keep it at 1-0 for a little while because I felt like Atalanta might have just wanted to build up uh, build up some confidence in the second half uh, and end up then putting City under a bit of pressure. And like I said, City, I was hoping that we could get two or three goals and then start moving our minds towards Sunday in that big mammoth clash against Liverpool. Hmm, yeah. Like I said, things don't work like that in football. Edison ended up picking up an injury, a minor injury, a muscle injury. I don't know if he's going to be playing on Sunday. I'm going to be waiting. Uh, I'm going to do my video probably tomorrow night sometime, my preview for the Liverpool game. I'm hoping City on their YouTube channel will put out a uh, YouTube video for uh, the training for the game against Anfield and building up to it. It'd be crazy not to be able to do something like that, particularly there's probably going to be quite some views in it. And I'm expecting it to be uh, something that everyone's looking at. And if Edison is training, then I'm going to presume that Edison is indeed going to start in this game. However, if Edison isn't featuring at all in training, I'm going to presume that he isn't starting in this game. Because uh, you want your keepers to be nice and fresh and nice and built up. So that's something we're going to talk about more in detail in tomorrow's video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Subscribe. Anyway, second half. Yeah, you guessed it. Pasalic, uh, or Pasalic, Pas Pas how you say his name? I don't know. Uh, 49 minutes in, simple crossover. Cross and header, and it goes into the back of the net. Pasalic, unmarked. It's a very disappointing goal to concede. Uh, yeah, that's how it is. 1-1 one, one after 49 minutes, and that's not really what we were looking for. I did make a note, Atalanta a lot better in the second half. Now, on to the big talking point. Claudio Bravo, 82 minutes I think it was. A ball was played through. I'm not sure why Bravo's so far out of his goal. I'm not sure if there's a bit of hesitancy there, but the ball wasn't there for him to be uh, to, for him to win. He wasn't going to get there, uh, and it'd been better staying uh, or backing off, putting the striker under pressure and saying actually go and meet the striker once he's got the ball and put him under pressure, or stay on your line, uh, head back, and then say try and beat me in the net. Um, instead, uh, he comes and challenges, uh, and the player ends up going over him uh, and making a meal of it. Now. VAR had a good long look at it. Decision was, red card for Bravo was the last man he's brought him down. Now, Bravo doesn't actually make a foul on him. He slides in, misses the ball, but he misses the player too. The player kind of jumps over Bravo before sticking out his foot, feeling the contact and going down. Now, I'd love to know the uh, definition of what a dive is and what simulation is, because a dive is when there's no contact and you just chuck yourself to the ground. But this player had an open net and I'm not too sure why he's left his foot trailing to go down. Like there's minimal contact in it and he's jumped over Bravo and then he just left his foot trailing so he could go down to get him sent off. But surely he'd have been better not going down because like I said it's minimal contact. He chucks himself to the ground, staying on his feet and putting the ball in the back of the net because there's an open net. They needed the, they needed the three points up. I, I don't understand why that happened. That baffled me. Kyle Walker, turns out, we don't know uh, if he'd volunteered or whether he'd been chosen. Apparently it's 50-50, uh, you know, a bit of this and a bit of that. He ended up putting on the goalkeeping gloves. Of course, Edison's picked up an injury. Bravo's been sent off. Puts on the goalkeeping shirt, jersey, sorry, of uh, Claudio Bravo. Straps on his gloves and puts himself in net, facing an impending free kick. And a shot comes in. And Kyle Walker makes a nice save. Nearly spilled it. Scared me to death nearly. But it's actually a decent save. And the most craziest thing that happened in this game is that Edison made no saves in this game. Claudio Bravo conceded but made no saves in this game. Kyle Walker did make a save in this game. Fantastic. City ended up wasting time like they do. Spending about four minutes down at the opposition's co um, corner flag. And what a way to waste time. We love doing it. To seal a draw and the players were really happy with it. Going down to ten men. Uh, 
And to be fair, going down to 10 men and how good Atalanta were in the second half, considering the circumstances, I'll take a draw. Full-time, 1-1, a disappointing result, but a positive result because it really could have been worse. And City are still on the verge of qualification. Like We could probably afford to lose our next two games and probably still qualify, more than likely still qualify in first place. You know, uh, but yeah, we've still got a job to do. Keeps things interesting in the Champions League. Atalanta are a lot better in the second half. Uh, Pasalic, excellent. They've ended up picking up a point. It might probably not going to be good enough for them in the end unless they win the next two games. Then that's going to make it very interesting. Uh, but for us, uh, I've seen some people saying this was not good preparation for Anfield, but it was good practice. It was a hostile environment, just like what we're expecting at Anfield. It was put under pressure, you know. They exposed the weaknesses, so we've got something to work on. Like, if we'd coasted this game 3-0, like, the flaws uh, would have still have been there. So, we've now got a few days' notice to try and put it right. Uh, I remember someone putting a quote for Pep Guardiola, saying that Pep Guardiola did say that what happens if Liverpool win and what happens if that? And he said, well, what happens actually if Man City win? Uh, and that's the mentality need we need to be going in at Anfield. I do think we need to have a little bit more cover at the back. I do think we need to be a little bit more reserved uh, and treat Liverpool with a lot of respect. Uh, I do think we need to play a, a good tactical game and it will help having Edison back uh, in net for that game. Although, don't rule out Kyle Walker going back in there. I don't think he did a bad job. We'll tell your thoughts that in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, I felt like it was good practice for Anfield, really. It was a really dominating game, an attacking end-to-end -end game. Atlanta's a good side. Third in Serie A, finished in the Champions League positions last season. They're a good quality side that, to me, are underperforming in the Champions League. They've got a good attacking intent. It's nothing that if they didn't make the mistakes at the back in the previous three games, that they could easily uh, have been elsewhere in the group. They could easily have found themselves possibly in second place. Like, they gave us a good game at the Etihad. Yes, we punished them for the mistakes, but they still showed the good attacking intent. And they're a good quality side that I think people have disrespected a little bit. And I think they've shown just how good a quality they are, how hard they work and how good they can be. First half, not very good, but second half, absolutely excellent. So, uh, fair play to Atalanta. Really enjoyed the game. Uh, really good performance there. Taylor two halves. Uh, for Manchester City, though, uh, like I said, hoping to have Edison back. Uh, is, you know, my JSGC man of the match is going to Kyle Walker. I thought he was excellent in this game. Uh, coming on and making a save, the only save of the game. I thought that was fantastic. Uh, we'll just have... Briefly, uh, a quick look at the stats for this game, just to try and draw up some conclusions here. But Atlanta ended up having 42% possession to City's 58, which is decent against City. Eight shots, two on target, both saved by Kyle Walker. I liked his little catch and then dive on the floor, I thought that was fantastic. Ten shots for City, four on target, 1-1. One, one. Probably a fair result, in my opinion. 552 passes, 87% pass completion rate. You expect a little bit higher from Manchester City. That is something for us to work on. 388 passes from Atalanta, 82% pass completion rate against us that's decent don't forget the San Siro isn't their home they don't play their home games there the ground's under redevelopment so it can't be competed in in European football so they're having to go from a home away from home so yeah clear cut chances three for Manchester City one for Atalanta City ended up putting one of theirs and Atalanta put one of theirs away crosses pretty poor from City a lot better from Atlanta uh, Atalanta sorry connecting with uh, I knew I'd make that mistake um Seven of their 16 crosses and three connecting of the 11 crosses from City. City ended up having more corners. I don't like this walking of the corners and not putting a ball into the box. And actually, I'm glad I mentioned that now. Like Defensive stats are uh, pretty... Uh, Dominated by City, actually. We ended up having more interceptions, more blocks, more clearances, and equal amount of headed clearances, which is really interesting. We don't often dominate the defensive stats, but just leads me to my last point before I end this video. We had a corner in the 96, was it the 94th or 96th minute, something like that. Surely someone on the bench should have communicated to the City players that this is probably going to be the last chance of the game, that we could easily just committed the players forward and put a ball into the box to try and win the game. I mean, it's the last attack of the game. Nothing else is going to happen. The counter-attack's not possible. So maybe I'll just put the ball into the box and see what happens. Ended up just passing it and wasting time uh, for about three seconds before the full-time whistle went. That's, again, that's just something I picked up on. Some people might have picked up on it. I don't know. City obviously happy with the one point. I'm happy with the one point. We can move on to Anfield. 
Yay! So anyway, there we go. It's been the video. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry, it's a bit of a long one, but there's lots to talk about. It's an interesting, fun game. So yeah, make sure you leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Make sure also you leave your thoughts in the comments below. We've got that Liverpool preview coming up tomorrow too. So if you want to stay tuned for that, make sure you subscribe, press that red button, press the bell, put your push notifications on to be notified immediately when I do upload. And don't forget also you can check out my social media links which you can find in the description below and popping up on screen for my Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you all again tomorrow for the next Manchester City video for this mammoth weekend against Liverpool. Oh yes. Or oh no. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'll see you all again for that video. So it's been JSGC. Hopefully have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace. Ciao for now.